Welcome to another training session. In today's session, we will learn how we can connect the HMI to the PLC and how we can send the data to the PLC from HMI. Next, we will learn how to send this data from PLC to the VFD in the form of analog signals. This data can be a speed reference signal to control the speed of the motor. Next, we will send the analog signal from the VFD to the PLC. This signal can be RPM of a motor, output frequency or the motor load. In the last, we will see how we can display this data of motor on the HMI screen and how we can control the VFD from the HMI panel. Before starting today's session, I would really like to thank all of you guys for appreciating my work and putting some lovely comments. In case you are new to this channel, please subscribe this channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming video tutorials. Let's see the wiring setup for the today's session. The wiring is really simple and straightforward. First of all, we will connect analog output channel 0 terminal 17 of the PLC to the analog input terminal 60 of the VFD and the ground to the ground terminal 55 of the VFD. This analog output signal will use to send the speed reference signal to the VFD. Next, we will connect the terminal 40 to analog output of the VFD to the analog input channel 0 of the PLC at the terminal number 3. VFD will send the analog output signal, for example, actual output frequency to the channel 0 of the PLC. Next, we will use the relay to activate the run command of the VFD. This relay can be turned on by the Q0.0 output signal of the PLC. Next, we have to set some parameters in the FC51 inverter to be able to send and receive the analog signals. First of all, we have to set the parameter 3-15 to 2. This will configure the terminal 60 of the VFD as analog input speed reference. This terminal will be receiving analog input signal as a speed reference from the PLC. Next, we will set the parameter 3-2 minimum reference as 0.0, .0 and parameter 3-03 maximum speed reference as 50.0. At 4 mA analog input signal, the VFD will run at 0.0, .0 Hz frequency and at 20 mA analog input signal at the terminal 60 of the VFD, motor will run at 50 Hz. Next, we can limit the maximum and minimum speed of the motor using 4-12 and 4-13 parameters. And next, we can set the minimum and the maximum limits of the analog signal as 4 mA to 20 mA by setting the parameter 6-22 and 6-23. Next, we have to set the parameter 6-24 low reference as 0.0 and, max ref and maximum reference 6-25 as 25.0. These two parameters are little tricky, so adjust these parameters really carefully. These parameters are used to scale the reference input analog signal. Next, we will set up the parameters for the analog output terminal 42 of the VFD. This terminal will be used to send analog signal back to the PLC. First of all, we will set the parameter 6-90 to 0. This will set the range of this output signal as 0 to 20 milliamps. Next, we will set the parameter 6-91 to 10. Now this terminal will send the analog output signal 0 to 20 mA proportional to the output frequency of the VFD. Next we will scale the analog output minimum signal of the VFD as 0.0% and maximum output signal as 50.0% using the parameter 6-93 and 6-94. Now how these scaling parameters are working you can refer to the Danfoss FC51 VFD user manual for more details. Next, we will go to the Sematic Manager software and create a new project. We will insert a new S7300 station. We will open this station by double clicking on it and open the hardware configuration of this station. First of all, we will insert a rail for this PLC station. Next, we will insert a 314-2DP PLC version 2.6 onto this rail. No need to configure the network for this project just we can click on OK to proceed. Next, you can see the analog and digital inputs and outputs of this PLC. First of all, we will open the analog I.O. settings by double-clicking on it. 
we will set the channel 0 of the analog input as a current input and we will set the signal range as 0 to 20 milliamps as the analog signal coming from the VFD is also set as 0 to 20 milliamp signal. Next we will set the channel 0 for the analog output as current and set its range as 4 to 20 milliamps. So we have analog input PIW752 with 0 to 20 milliamps range and this analog input will come from the VFD for the actual output frequency of the VFD. Next we have configured a analog output PQW752 with 4 to 20 milliamps range. This analog output channel will be sending the speed reference signal to the VFD. Next we will open the digital IO settings. We can change the addresses of the digital IOs in this menu. We will change the start address to the zero. Now these IO addresses will be starting from the zero. Next we will save and compile this file and our hardware configuration is finished here. Next we will open the programming blocks and open the OB1 block. In the network one, we will make a logic to start the VFD. We will use the M0.0 start bit to turn on the Q0.0 output of the PLC. Q0.0 will turn on the relay to start the VFD. In network number two, we will make a logic to send the speed reference analog signal to the VFD. We will insert the FC106 unscale function on the ladder. We will enter MD20 at the input of this FC106 function. Whatever real value we will enter in this MD20 data register, it will get unscaled and goes to the PQW752 analog output data register. We can set high and low limits as 50.0 and 0, 0.0 as we want to run the VFD between 0 Hz to 50 Hz frequency. Next we can enter PQW752 at the output of the FC106 function. PQW will send this output analog signal to the channel 0 of the PLC. In network number 3 we will make a logic to read the analog signal of the actual output coming from the VFD. For reading the analog signal we will use the scale function FC105. We will enter the PIW752. PIW752 is a data register holding the values for the analog input channel 0. This value can be scaled from 0 Hz to 50 Hz by entering 0.0 and 50.0 in low and high limits. In the last we will enter MD40 data register at the out of the scale function. The result of the scaling will be stored in the MD40 data register. So we can see the actual output frequency of the VFD in this MD40 data register. Next we will go back and make a variable table and we will define a MD20 data register as a floating point. Next we will download the project in the PLC and let's see how does it works. After downloading the project into the PLC we will monitor the ladder logic. First of all, we will start the VFD by forcing on the start bit M0.0. This will send a digital run command signal Q0.0 to the VFD. Next, we will change the tag value representation as a floating point. Now we can change the value of the MD20 data register which is a speed reference signal for the VFD. First of all, I will enter 5.0 Hz in the MD20 data register and modify the value. As you can see that the VFD starts to run at the 5.0 Hz frequency and the set point MD20 is 5 Hz and it goes to the VFD analog input and the VFD sends back the actual output frequency which is 4.0 Hz in the network number 3. Next we will modify the set point MD20 to 10 Hz. As you can see that the set point is now 10 Hz goes to the PQW752 output data register and the VFD is running at 10 Hz and the VFD is sending back the actual frequency at 9.72 Hz. Next we can try 25 Hz frequency as you can see that the VFD starts to run at 25 Hz and the actual output frequency signal sent by the VFD is 24.9 Hz.
Next we can try 50 Hz set point signal. As you can see that the VFD is now running at 50 Hz and the VFD is sending back the actual output frequency as 49.8 Hz. So that's the end of the part 1 of the video tutorial. In the part number 2, we will see how we can send the set point frequency from the HMI to the PLC and then from the PLC to the VFD. Next, we will see how we can show the actual output frequency on the HMI screen. We will also learn how to send the digital signals to the PLC and how we can read the digital signal from the PLC and show them onto the HMI screen. That's the end of the part one. I hope you like it. Do share, like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming video tutorials regarding PLC and HMI programming. Till next time, take care and goodbye.